It's part two of the Big Stew Challenge where Siobhan's let me appropriate her YouTube account for two parts and do you know what? I've started doing some bits and things. Do you know what? It's no good if I don't actually record it, is it? So all I've done so far is, the, you know, the at the end of a green bit, uh, at the end of the leak of the soft bits, the green bit, and I put that in a pan uh, just on its own because we don't include that. And I've chopped on this chopping board here and I'm moving to a different size the leak that's going to go in. I've chopped up some potatoes. What I need to do is I need to chop up, I think let's, let's have a look what's in the fridge, but I think carrots are going to be the next thing. Right. We are going to peel these carrots. I know you don't always need to peel carrots, but I think for a stew you should. Let's chop these up into nice, reasonably thick bits. The thicker you cut them, of course, the longer it's going to take to stew, but I think we pretty much got all day because we're about um, 9.30 in the morning at the moment. They're done, now what next? Uh, I'm going to pop some of this stuff in the pan, some of this nice veggie stuff because we're just going to try and soften it off a little bit as we're going to do with the meat as well. Uh, normally when I make stews I don't soften off the vegetables but I caught something online yesterday saying it does taste a little bit nicer, you get kind of more flavour out of it so we're going to see if that's true. If I used my brain, I would actually pick the whole chopping board up, there we go, and pop them in the pan like so. Next, something I'm really not a fan of, that's onion. Apparently, the way to avoid it kind of hurting your eyes and stuff is never to cut through uh, the root. But also, I think you can apparently cut it into quarters uh, if you want to uh, do it really, really fine. So I asked them for the smallest. Oh. Ah, there we have them for the smallest onion they do. How would I do this? Which way? I don't know if there's a way you're supposed to cut it. But anyway, let's not, let's not worry too much about that. Oh, hang on a minute. So you have to cut it down one way first, but not all the way through. But lots of the way through, but not all the way through. <laughs> he makes this look a bit better. And of course, to be fair, he can see where his knife is going. So that's a thing that worries me, but let's not worry too much for the second. Right, and then I think, yep, yeah, just feeling around. Okay, so there you go. I don't think that's horrendously bad, if I'm honest. Um, I'd have done it thinner if I could, but they are very, very thin bits. So we're going to pop those also in the vegetables on the on the pan. I'm holding a camera, which is why I'm not picking up the board and doing it the clever way. And the first thing that's going to go into this pan is a tin of tomatoes. However. These are kind of plummy type tomatoes rather than necessarily the ones I would normally use. I mean, they're fine, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mush them down a bit. I'm sure that would happen in stewing anyway. I nearly forgot to do this. Right, so what we want is some garlic. I'd say normally two cloves, but what we've got here is neither of them very big. So we've got tiny clove here. Whether well, or not this is okay clove. The other two are tiny. We're gonna chop those up really, really titchy and tiny. I don't think I'm gonna put very much of this in the pan. Um, what you want to do is some broken up OXO cubes. Yeah, it's nice and to ha, ah, you can't beat that. You probably could beat it, but it would ruin the whole effect. So what we've got is about uh, three broken up OXO cubes in there. Pan up over here. I'm gonna give this a bit of a stir around. What I have just done is added a bit of onion sauce on top of it anyway which should hopefully make up for any deficit in onions due to an intense dislike of them. One little nightmare disaster is that I've checked and we've run out of pepper, so I'm gonna to have to go and get some pepper later. Not that you want loads in it, but you can't just do it without some pepper, can you? Right, I've just turned the pan off, because as I say, we're not looking to, to make them particularly soft, we're just giving it a bit of a head start. What I have done is, and I'll give this spoon a stir in here, is just put about a tablespoon worth of flour in. The secret ingredient that Siobhan uses is on its way. Just give this wooden spoon a nice little bit of a rinse before popping it in the sink. Oh yes, does that smell good or what? I'm a bit worried about how we're going to fit everything in. Giving that a stir, but I really wish you could smell through YouTube. Mmm, delicious. And you remember from yesterday's YouTube part one, what we have is really thickly diced top side of beef. 
and we're going to pop that all in the pan now. Again, we're not looking to cook it really, we're just looking to soften it and brown it on the outside. More brown it on the outside. Now I don't propose specifically seasoning this beef because um, they're seasoning already in the slow cooker. Have a look at the thickness of this beef, it's really, really thick. So that's why I think it's quite important to give it just that little bit of a brown. Absolutely gorgeous, let's pop that in the pan. Not the best camera angle perhaps, but we have actually got to just try and make sure that we get this in the pan and I can't hold a camera and do what I'm doing, which is just with a wooden spoon, spoon in this lovely, lovely, really thick meat in here. I'm kind of wondering whether it's all going to fit in this pot because as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in here. It's not done yet though, because Siobhan's magic ingredients coming. We now have the Aspel's Suffolk cider here, and that's going to go in here. So let's de let's sort this beast out. Let's see how well this covers and whether maybe we need a bit more. What we're looking to do is just submerge everything so it's just above the level of the food. My hands are scrupulously clean, but I do just actually unfortunately need to feel that. It's actually not bad. In fact, that is submerged, so I don't think we're going to need any more there. Um, what I did do is I put, as I said, about a tablespoon worth of plain flour in there, just because it kind of helps as a slight thickening agent. You can always add more, but you want to start those so that you don't end up with something like really, um, you know, gooey. I'm trying to, I'm trying to press Siobhan here, I'm trying to press her. I don't want to, I don't want to mess this one up. A lot riding on it. So we'll give this just a little bit of a stir around, make sure it's all evenly distributed. That seems just about perfect to me. So we're going to pop on the lid. We're going to pop this stew into a corner. Ooh. Should we plug it in? What do you reckon? Is that going to help? There we go, that's in there. And we're going to pop this beast on high for the first 20, 30 minutes and then we're going to pop it down to medium. So what you mustn't do when you're cooking anything in a slow cooker is to be tempted to pick the lid up all the time. Uh, once it's been there for something like, I don't know, five and a half, six hours, you can check it for seasoning and stuff. But that now needs to not be touched till at least then. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't mean I can just sit there and do nothing because there's a little bit of tidying to do. So let's do that with a bit of magic. There you go, spotless. Now that bit of spotless took somewhere in the region of 15 minutes. So um, yeah, just assume that next time you see this, I will have turned it down to medium and in there for about six hours. Forward. It's another really windy day today, so I mean very windy, so I'm really excited to see how well the Dead Cat microphone cover reduces it. But it's very windy, so I'm expecting this to be windy now. Yes, of course I've got a cup of coffee. And just like that, it's gone. Should we head on to the shop then, Mr. Sammy? Yeah, no, that's not a shake, no, is it? It's a shake for yes, I can't wait to go forward. <laughs> okay, here we are then. So we've got um, some water and some specifically fruited sparkling water that Siobhan rather likes and I've got a can, a can of Diet Coke as well but we got the pepper, that was the reason we were there so should we go and get that in the stew Sammy? Should we go and put that in the stew? See you back at the house and here we are in the kitchen and it's not been six hours it has been uh, about two and a half hours since this beast first went on and I said not to touch the lid for like five and a half hours but we need to season it because we didn't have any pepper and don't know how that happened so I'm afraid we're gonna to have to do this. So I'm gonna put the top off over here I'm gonna give it a good old stir around. Yep, oh it smells gorgeous by the way out of this world gorgeous. So what I've got here is two clean teaspoons. I'm gonna taste it without the sauce just without the um, tiny bit just without the pepper. Yeah that's actually a really nice taste but it definitely does need really gorgeous taste actually. Definitely does need some pepper. Now this is definitely coming on but it could be a little bit thicker so what we want to do is put about a tablespoon of plain flour in there. No, no, not much more than that. Again you can always add it but you can't take it away. So let's give that a stir in. We've got our other clean teaspoon here and let's just see how that's going. Delicious. It may well need a bit more flour later but for now this goes on and it's going to stay on for about four hours without needing to be touched again catching a bit okay i've just had a message from siobhan to say that she's heading back 
uh, home earlier than expected, which means, well, she's gonna be back before the stew is ready. And I'm a little bit nervous, I'm gonna tell you exactly why I'm nervous. Siobhan makes this stew, oh, out of this world. Um, and it's a nice stew, there's no question it's a nice stew. But I'm just a bit worried that it's not up to her standards. So we're gonna find out what she thinks of it. Um, she might have some tips to, to make it just that a little bit perfect um, when she gets back. So, you know, watch this space, but we're not gonna forget the dumplings that are in the freezer because that's an essential part uh, to the stew, if you ask me. A good few hours later, Siobhan is back. She's upstairs and she's come and stuck a wash on. I've even started the edit on the table of some of the other footage. But now, now we can check how this is going. I think it might need a little bit longer, but let's give this an open. Okay, smells delicious. Let's have a look with a spoon. Yeah, that is definitely gonna need a bit more flour. But before we do any flour, let's quickly test with a clean spoon for seasoning and taste. Actually, that's pretty good. But let's go put a bit more flour in. You know, it's got a fair old bit of texture to it already. We're gonna give this a good old stir around into here. We're not after a really thick consistency. I'd say an awful lot of love's gone into this stew, but that would sound dodgy, wouldn't it? Probably about an hour off, I would say. Right then, ready or not, here goes the stew, which I know in my heart of hearts is not gonna match Siobhan's, but let's see how it goes. Smells absolutely gorgeous. We've got the dumplings ready to go. I think I'm gonna just rest the camera here a minute. So here we go, nice generous portions of those. What we need though is we need dumplings. Let's go and get those. Yum, yum. You can't beat those, but how is it going to compare? So the rules of this vlog are, Siobhan's not allowed to be in it, but we've got a way of cheating it. So this is Siobhan's hand. Siobhan, you've tasted it. Is it thumbs up or thumbs down? Woohoo! 